Hello again everyone and welcome back. In today's video what I'm going to do is review Ubuntu 24.04 which I have installed on this ThinkPad X1 Carbon. I'm going to give it a full review in this video. And as an aside, considering that both Ubuntu and Fedora have new releases this week, needless to say it's been very tiring here in the studio this week. But when Fedora and Ubuntu have new releases, it's a big deal. Both of these distributions are used in the enterprise, and now with Ubuntu 24.04 being an LTS release, long-term support release, that means Ubuntu 24.04 is going to be supported for a longer period of time, so enterprise organizations are going to potentially be looking at Ubuntu for a solution with 24.04. As I evaluated Ubuntu 24.04, I found that it provides a great desktop experience, but unfortunately I did run into a few problems, and those problems make me ask myself, do we really need a new Ubuntu release every six months? Should this project just slow down? Well, you know what? I can't wait to tell you all about it, but before I do, I need to take a moment and mention the official Learn Linux TV shop, which has just been updated with brand new products. Inside the shop, you'll find distro-themed shirts, bags, drinkware, and more. And there's some other surprises there as well. For example, I've just introduced a mouse pad that doubles as a Tmux cheat sheet. How cool is that? So check out the shop at merch.learnlinux.tv, or you can check out the merch shelf right here on YouTube. You could get yourself something really cool and support Linux learning at the same time, so it's a win-win. As always, I appreciate your support. I couldn't do it without you. Now it's time to dive into Ubuntu 24.04, so let's do that right now. And here it is. Ubuntu 24.04 is powered by Linux kernel 6.8, and the desktop edition, which is what I'm reviewing today, is based on GNOME 46. Ever since Ubuntu switched back to GNOME as the default desktop environment, each release has followed a pretty similar trend. Ubuntu takes GNOME, which has a large install base within the Linux community, and changes its look and feel to make it all its own. This means that Ubuntu uses a very popular desktop environment, but it also adds its own personality. Ubuntu 24.04, the new release, is no exception to this trend. Sure, there's new branding this time around, refined themes, updated packages, a brand new Linux kernel, but other than that, you'll probably find the experience more of the same. And that could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how you feel about Ubuntu. Now let's move on and talk about the installation process. Now I've reviewed a bunch of Ubuntu releases during the life of this channel, and I've mentioned more times than I care to count that the installer hasn't changed this time around and that there's nothing much to mention. But lately things are changing. Ubuntu has been in the process of rolling out a new installer for a while now named Subiquity. And it's not new to Ubuntu's desktop spin, but it is new if you consider the fact that this is the first time we find it in an LTS release. Subiquity has a more modern look and feel with a presentation that comes off as very professional. The actual screens that you'll see during the process will follow the same overall workflow as before, but the installer looks a lot better. But one thing that is functionally different is the fact that the minimal option is the default option now. A minimal installation includes fewer applications by default, but you can opt to have the entire suite of applications installed if you want to. For example, you'll have LibreOffice installed. Other than that, even though the new installer is a brand new experience, it's a familiar experience at the same time, and I could tell that there's excitement around this new installer. And rightfully so, it looks great. But unfortunately, I really think they should have waited a little bit longer to make it the default. More on that later. Once you finish installing Ubuntu 2404, you'll see a welcome screen appear, just like before. It'll give you access to tune a few things, and then you can log in and start using the desktop to see what's new this time around. The most obvious improvement is GNOME 46, which provides the default desktop experience. Now with this new GNOME release, there's not a great deal of change when compared to previous versions, but when it comes to Ubuntu 2404, GNOME 46 is a bit more noteworthy. Reason being, the previous LTS release defaulted to GNOME 42, and a lot has changed since then. Some users will be upgrading directly from 2204 when the upgrade is offered to the wider install base as soon as 2404.1, which comes out this coming August. The GNOME experience this time around is pretty good overall, and that's saying a lot considering how bad of an experience we had with 2204. Even though that release included GNOME 42, it only included part of GNOME 42, as the desktop cherry-picked various components rather than giving us the entire desktop. 
Back then, we were told that this boneheaded decision was due to stability concerns with GNOME at the time, but as we'll see later on in this review though, stability might not be as important to Ubuntu as we might think. But all in all though, the desktop experience in Ubuntu 2404 is really good. The performance is fantastic and I have no complaints there at all. I think it's awesome to finally have a proper GNOME implementation in an LTS release, so Ubuntu 2404 corrects a very big problem that we had back with 2204. Unfortunately, as good of a desktop experience as Ubuntu 2404 happens to be, I've encountered a few problems along the way that make me a bit hesitant to recommend it. First, when I run the live desktop, this release defaults to scaling that's so small I could barely read it. I have a 4K display on my end, and with the default resolution settings, it literally gives me eye strain. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but I wanted to let you know that I have a brand new Linux course available, and if you're looking to get certified, then this one is right up your alley. Over on Udemy, I've just launched my first ever certification prep course, and this one will teach you everything you need to know in order to pass the Linux Essentials exam and become certified through the Linux Professional Institute. And with over 200,000 certification holders, LPI is the first and largest vendor-neutral Linux and open source certification body. Any certification through LPI is a credential that will definitely be an asset to your career. And my brand new course is a perfect tool to help get you there. With my Linux Essentials course, you'll enjoy over 23 lessons that will teach you valuable Linux skills. Each video will keep you engaged while breaking down each and every topic into easy to understand concepts that will make even the most challenging topics seem simple. In addition, you'll be able to follow along with hands-on examples that will have you working directly with Linux commands and technologies. Even if you are not planning on becoming certified, the Linux Essentials course from Learn Linux TV is a great way to get into Linux in general. So even hobbyists will benefit from this course as well. Now don't worry though, this new Udemy course doesn't change any content that you've been enjoying here on YouTube. My new and completely separate venture on Udemy is designed to help boost your skills even further, and meanwhile, the videos here on YouTube will continue as they've been for over 10 years now. So check out my brand new Linux Essentials course and pass that exam. I would really appreciate it. Now, let's get back to the video. I didn't have this problem with Fedora earlier this week, and with both Ubuntu and Fedora basing on the same GNOME version, I find it really strange that I have this issue in one and not the other. Also, consider that Ubuntu targets the enterprise, and with over 60% of adults wearing glasses, I think resolution is a very important thing to get right. After all, Fedora got it right. Now you might be thinking, why is Jay complaining about a simple resolution setting? Well, expectations when it comes to an enterprise desktop are much higher, but the thing is, I'm not done yet. Continuing, anytime I change the resolution, GNOME literally crashes. It took three reboots just to get my display settings right, and I haven't had this much trouble setting display resolution since Windows 98. Anyway, after installation, I decided to record a segment where I was going to tell my audience how to update their system. This is in regard to the installation video that I am also uploading, in that video, I was originally going to tell you to open the App Center and install updates, but unfortunately, that doesn't work either. When I opened it, I got a message telling me that a locked process was preventing it from working. But what process was it that locked App Center? App Center. The process was App Center. Yes, App Center locked itself. It opened, and when it opened, it locked itself and prevented itself from working. You literally can't make this stuff up. Maybe Ubuntu should have used GNOME software rather than overcomplicating everything. So here we have a fantastic desktop, a GNOME implementation with tweaks and customizations to give it personality, and Ubuntu has released a modern looking, really well designed GNOME implementation. And I think we should take a moment and just recognize that it is a great implementation. Even if you don't like GNOME, I think they did a good job. But again, we have some problems. And the issues that I ran into, to be fair, aren't going to be the hardest to work around, but we have an enterprise desktop, something that's going to be supported for five years, something that businesses are going to rely on, and right out of the box, we already have a few problems. It's almost like they rushed this release or something. And the thing is, Ubuntu releases every six months, literally every six months. And it just seems to me like Ubuntu releases on the day they're supposed to release just for the sake of being on time. When it comes to Debian and Fedora, if they run into a big problem or anything like this, they will delay the release, as they should. If they feel like their community is going to run into a problem, it makes sense to pull the release back or just delay it and make sure that it's ready. But 
Ubuntu seems to release every six months or else. Whether it's ready or not, they're releasing right on the day, and then we can experience problems like I've been experiencing with this release. Now, add to the fact that GNOME really doesn't change all that much every single release. I mean, yes, there's new features, but nothing that's drastically different. If anything, GNOME is more of an incremental improvement each and every release, so I don't feel like we have a lot to gain by upgrading to a new distribution every six months. I feel like that release schedule is a bit overkill, and when I run into errors like the ones that I've run into during my time with Ubuntu 2404, it just makes me nervous to trust it. And if we can't even connect a display to our computer without it crashing, I would say Ubuntu needed some more time in the oven this time around, and I would argue that they should drop the release schedule altogether and release every year instead of every six months. If nothing else, they should probably delay a release if you're going to experience errors like this one. Now don't get me wrong, the Ubuntu developers have done a great job. The problem isn't the developers. I'm not saying they did a bad job, but what I am saying is that the developers just don't have enough time to do their job. We need to give them more time so that way we can have an enterprise release that we can rely on. Anyway, with that said, thank you so much for checking out this review. I really appreciate it. I have some really cool videos coming very soon, if I do say so myself, that I can't wait for you to see. So subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I'll see you in the next video.